today we're going to cover rigid body transforms. This is rotations or homogeneous transformations of one coordinate frame or part to another coordinate frame. And the reason that's important is because each robot, of each, each joint of each robot has a different coordinate frame because it's one axis per degree of freedom. So in order to calculate where the tip of the robot is and how it moves relative to the base, we need to be able to transform from the base to joint one to joint two, so on all the way to the end of the robot. So let's go into some details about exactly how to do that from the basics. Robots can be modeled as rigid bodies in three-dimensional space. So their maximum number of degrees of freedom is six. X, Y, Z, position, roll, pitch, yaw, orientation. Pose is position and orientation together. So the orientation is important because the robot can maybe be able to reach a certain point, but it has to be able to reach a certain point coming from a certain direction. So if you need to pick up a part from the top, but the robot is stretched out maximum when it reaches that part, it won't be able to come down from above. It would be coming at it from some other angle. So orientation and position are both important to pay attention to. To describe the pose, we use a homogeneous transformation, one for each link. And then the same point can be represented in multiple coordinate frames using vectors. Vector algebraic manipulation must be done in the same coordinate frame. So if you are adding points together or adding vectors together, you need to do that all in one coordinate frame. So points that you see in lots of different coordinate frames would all be need to put into the same one. Then you can do the math. Then you can go and put it back in its original frame. So first we'll look at point representation. See the Death Star here is a point, P, in an original frame. So P in the zero frame, so that is coordinates five, six, so five in the X direction, six in the Y direction. Now, if we wanted to find this same point, give the same point in the new frame, frame one, then we actually would go in the negative X direction and then positive Y direction. So that, say here, is negative 2.8 in the X, positive 4.2 in the Y. Now, the origin representation, this would be origin of A with respect to B is origin of frame A with respect to frame B. So origin one with respect to zero is we take this point, origin of frame one, and we see where is that relative to frame zero. So this would be go to the side 10, go up five, that distance. Now, origin of zero in frame one, we would get to frame zero relative to frame one. So if we start if with frame one, then we would go negative in the x direction, really far away, negative 10.6. Then we have to go positive in the y direction, 3.5, to get to origin zero. So let's look at that on a whiteboard. So here we're going to compare again the points and the origins. So we'll say here, to get to P, we go positive in the X direction, vertical in the Y direction. So point in the zero frame equals, say this is five in the X, six in the Y. And then if we want to find it in frame one, then we have to go actually negative in the X direction, positive in the Y direction. So this was negative 2.8, and this is positive 4.3. 
So P in the one equals negative 2.8, positive 4.3. Now comparing origins, this is O0, this is O1. So if we want to know origin of frame one with respect to frame zero, we would go all this way in the x direction, this little bit in the y direction. So this is 10 in the x direction, 3.5 in the y direction. So here we have 10, 3.5. Now, if we wanted then to find origin zero with respect to origin one, so we go far in the negative, then in the positive y. So this is a negative 10.35. So origin zero in frame one equals negative 10.3 and Five. So finally, vectors. A vector just has a magnitude and a direction. So the vector to that point in frame zero is the same as the coordinates of that point, just because it points from the origin to that point. Now, if we want to transform this vector into a new frame, we just slide it here. So you can see the vector is in the same orientation, just a magnitude and direction. We just slid the arrow over. But in this case, the x component is larger and the y component is smaller than it was in the original frame. So we have the 7.77, 0 0.8. Now the way that we find these is we have to know the angle or the position of frame one with respect to frame zero. So now we'll go into details on how you can actually solve for these. Vector algebraic manipulation must be done in the same coordinate frame. So if you want to add, subtract, multiply, divide, vectors, whatever, you have to put them all in the same coordinate frame, do the math, and then put them back in the original frame. You can transform the frames appropriately using a rotation matrix. So this is how much is one frame relative to the other. And you get the rotation matrix from either the axis coordinate vectors or the direction cosine matrix. So let's look at what those are. Here, we're gonna use some abbreviations. C theta means cosine theta, and S theta equals sine theta. So to get those, we need to know the axis vectors for each of the axes. This, you can see, is a rotation around the Z axis. So Z0 and Z1 are the same, whereas the X and Y rotated. So to get the rotation matrix, we need to know X of frame one with respect to frame zero, Y of frame one with respect to frame zero, and then Z of frame one with respect to frame zero. So we put those all in here, ro rotated around Z by angle theta. So the X is going to be cosine in original x, sine in original y. So x of one and zero is cosine, sine, and then it wasn't anything in the z direction. The y is negative sine in the x direction and cosine in the y direction. So we have minus sine, cosine, zero. And then the z vectors actually didn't change. So we have zero, zero, one for the z vector. If we want to express this point and say we know the coordinates in frame one and we need to express the point in frame zero, we can just multiply by the rotation matrix. P0 equals R1 with respect to zero times P1. And you see sort of the, the ones would cancel and you end up with the zero. So we do matrix multiplication here. To get the original point, we multiply that rotation matrix by the point in frame one. So 
this means that it, it's matrix multiplication. So we'd multiply this row times this column, then this row times this column, then this row times this column. So you can look up tutorials for matrix multiplication if you do not remember it from linear algebra in middle school. Now, if you know the coordinates in frame zero and you want to express the point in frame one, you have to take the inverse of the rotation matrix. So special property for only rotation matrices, the transpose equals the inverse. It is not like that for all matrices, just for rotation matrices. The transpose is when you flip the rows and the columns. So here you can see that if we switch the rows and the columns, so we have first column, second column, third column, becomes first row, second row, third row, then this part kind of flipped, you just flip diagonally along that center. And then we could get P1 if we knew the point in the original frame. These are rotation matrices for around each axis. So z-axis rotation, this is what we've been doing. But if you want to do a y-axis rotation or an x-axis rotation, the matrices look like this. You can actually derive these the same way as we did for the z-axis by drawing the picture and writing down what are the sine and cosine components of each of the new vectors in the original frame. There are two types of rotations. Passive rotation is rotating the frame about the object. So you can see here in this example, the black frame rotated and became the blue frame. Active rotation is the object in the fixed frame. So you can see that here, the TIE fighter itself is what rotates. The frame remains static. So two different rotation types. 